Welcome to the Marvel Cinematic University Podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Canton III, and we are here for a themed episode this week as we are going into take a tude MCU hot takes. So we will get to that in a second. But of course, Marvel Cinematic University, patreon.com. Check us out there. You can get our bonus content. We did the bad boys, the OG bad boys that came out earlier uh, this, this week. And check that out. You can get that and all of our other previous episodes on the feed for $3 and the Discord amongst those things. So if you want to support that, go ahead. And of course, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all of those wonderful things. And first, let's introduce the super producer, Jake Christie. Jake, how are you? I'm doing well. Excited. I mean, it was a little chilly in NYC today, but it's getting hot in here with the takes. Oh boy, yeah, take a toot is here and, and ready. And of course, we have our friend, pal, compadre, Rod, the black guy who tips. Rod, how you doing, sir? First of all, I'd like to say I appreciate you good brothers inviting me down here again. I know it's going to be lots of hot takes today, so I wanted to come in here with some hot takes of my own and evaluate the hot takes, you know, because I really... I really need to get this out here that, that it's time. And I appreciate the way y'all looking. You know, y'all dressed up for this. You know, you looking good over there with that Bobcast hat. That's that's an awesome hat you got there, Jake. And, and I love the t-shirt you got on AC. So it's good to see you brothers in here this morning. <laughs> oh, that's a great that's great. That's tremendous. I love it. I love it all. So yes, in terms of take it to we had we had some of our listeners send in their takes and we'll evaluate them. As uh, as we go along in the show, but let's go around the room and let's talk about our own hot takes if we have any. We'll we'll go to the guest first. Rod, do you have any particular MCU hot take that you have on your mind that you wanted to get out? Uh, I have quite a few hot takes, but the first hot take that I have, and I look, <laughs> I love this brother to death. Okay, uh, he's. He's America's ass, but he's also, you know, a, a great actor and a and a great character in Steve Rogers and Chris Evans. But however, <laughs> Captain America is a man that is born in the 1920s or 1900s, or so, early 1900s or something like that. That fall in the World yeah. War. Now, it is no way you can freeze a white man from that time. And I'm going to say it. I know I'm the AC. Okay, Jake. Okay, I, I see y'all on camera. I can see the faces y'all are making right now. I, I'm saying it so you don't have to say it. So don't, America, you could come for me. Don't come for them. But Steve Rogers should be racist. <laughs> Why isn't he a Republican? <laughs> Why isn't he a conservative? What have the Republicans ever done for the Avengers in this world? The Democrats aren't doing anything. They're trying to get their identification and lock them up. They're chasing them around the globe. They're passing protocols. I don't understand this entire ordeal that's happening with Steve. He should have looked up. He should have saw Sam and said, go get me a sandwich as soon as he woke up. There's no way... He would have woke up to Nick Fury and said, you know what, Sam Jackson, we're cool. I'm listening to you. It only made sense when he ran from him. That's the only time that the Avengers made sense with Captain America. That's my hot take. <laughs> Jake, do you have any thoughts? No, you know, I think that... Um... I'll say this. I, we still know that he's not a Republican because a lot of Republicans will not mm -hmm. say racist stuff to the faces of people of color and still vote that way. Um, but no, I think he makes some excellent points. You know, uh, I think because he was, you know, he, he went into the ice before because he's from Brooklyn, obviously, but he went into the ice before the Dodgers integrated. So we can't even use that. So you make it it's a good point. Mm -hmm. I will say this. Captain America has, uh, quote unquote, rebelled against authority enough that you could make the argument that he is hiding in plain sight. We don't know for sure when he went back in time and in Endgame to spend that rest of his life with Peggy. I mean, it's pretty clear that he did not get involved in any civil rights movement. It's pretty clear that he did not help anybody in particular. He was just trying to get that ass. So if he was just trying to get that ass at the end of the day, you could make the argument even in, even if it's just based off of his own ignorance, 
Ron, you might be on target with this one. That, well, that's Goodness a good gracious. point, AC, and I appreciate you saying that. But the only thing that I would like to push back a little bit on, he still mm-hmm. gave that shield to Sam and not Bucky. Oh, now, see, that doesn't make sense for a racist man of that time period to yeah. then hand the shield to a black man and say, you Captain America now. Never. Not not in my America. No, they don't want to do that right now. So I don't I don't respect that. I don't I don't like the way that they wrote that character. It doesn't feel real to me. It doesn't feel lived in. And I feel like he got by on a lot of, uh, you know, he's getting by on a lot of woke writing that D, that Disney, DEI yeah. Disney is writing right there. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, ironically, in, in rewatching Falcon and the Winter Soldier, you get a lot of the stuff, especially in the second episode where Sam does not know that Isaiah Bradley exists. He goes kind of a little bit on a diatribe about mm-hmm. about not having about having the shield and what that means and why he doesn't want to accept it at first. I do wonder. Was Steve Rogers, to your point, trying to set up Sam Wilson to fail? Or was it a situation like, you know, there's a long history of, uh, you know, we think about football coaches in the South being like, you know, I don't respect you, but, you know, you're athletic. And so I, I, I put you, I'm going to put you in the position, you know, I, I'm, we don't know. I, but I think, Rod, I think your point is, is correct. You know, we really don't know. You know, obviously, like, he's probably not going to be as racist as, as if he was from, you know, uh, out, you know, the deep south, but right. it's not. I mean, Brooklyn was not the woke haven that it is now back in the 40s. He, he would have you know, definitely like, re- referred to Sean She as something that you're not supposed to say anymore. Like, he, he's that tight. He was in that era where they didn't have mm-hmm. all the words and the updated phraseology and stuff. He, it didn't look like he was, yeah. he was reading stuff, but it didn't look like he was reading bell hooks when they pulled up those books. No. So I, I'm not sure yeah. that I, you know, if he read the fire la- next time on his list then I would say, okay, I, I see how you got there, brother. I respect that. But right now, hell no, you can't just listen to Marvin Gaye. And now all of a sudden you not racist. No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. That'd what if he also? What if he came out like being? Because you know, back then people used to be mm-hmm. racist against other types of white people. Like, what if he like was like you know when uh, Natasha first came, I was like Romanoff. You have you wouldn't happen to be Polish, would you? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to see in the movies, and I, I was a little uh-huh. let down. Mm, yeah. <laughs> well, nonetheless, just a just a great take by Roger right uh, off the gate. Ooh, yeah. ooh, flaming, flaming, Jake. Do you got have anything to? I to do, follow? I do. I should have worked on a Mike Francesa impression because I felt like that. You know, you know, I did a little Diet Coke next to me, but um, <laughs> this is an actual hot take because it's a, this. I know I'm going against the conventional wisdom a lot of people have. Is yes. I think it is generally a good thing that the villains die at the end of all movies. I think that movies are a different medium than comics, and because in comics they come so frequently that it is expected that you need to bring characters back to tell new stories. But the fact of the matter is, with most of these characters, we're going to get maybe three or four movies with them in it at most. And so the idea of reusing villains when we're not telling new stories feels like a waste of time, it feels like a waste of the actors, and it just... I think movies need a finality that comic books don't have. So I think when people bemoan the fact that like people in the rogues gallery die, it's like, this is not comics. We're not going to have Spider-Man 10 where 10 villains come back together because that's not how movies work. I feel like it's usually a good thing and I'm glad that they do it. Rod, what, what do you think about Jake's take? First of all, Jake and me, we go way back. Okay, he's a good brother. You know, we talk all the time through DMs. You know, I watch his TikToks. I see what you're doing over there on TikToks. You're doing it big. Okay, I see what you're doing. That's good. You know, I love to see it. However, I think it's kind of silly to say that you should kill off these characters when the actors are still alive. Okay, if... If these people are going to be alive in real life, they could come back. They could be hella. Okay, it's no reason to kill them. We need to use all that IP. You got to drain it till there's nothing left. I want to see a hella spinoff. Okay, some of my favorite people, Agatha, you know, they made a whole thing out of her. She was the villain. Now she got a TV show. So you never want to waste that. In the comic books, nobody, no death. Sometimes it's a body, it's still no death. 
because we trying to get every single dollar out of this franchise. And so that's why I respect what Marvel does in the comics and I respect what they do with the TV shows. But sometimes with the movies, I I can't really respect it because just because they dead because, oh, you're not supposed to be able to live if you get killed by Thanos. Well, I disagree. (laughs) <laughs> Did Jake, do you have any pushback? No, I, I, I think that, you know, I think you make a, a decent point about the actor still being alive. I think it, I think obviously it does depend on, you know, who the character is. Um, I, I just think, I guess my larger point is that, like, I don't mind it that they go on to a new villain for most movies. I don't need, I don't need to see three movies where the person's fighting against the same villain. I feel like it just kind of, I, I, I feel like it's just not... If you're going to have the real estate of only, like, three total movies with a character, I'd rather explore more of the rogues gallery to explore different parts of them. And if you can bring back characters in different ways without maybe not, not them not necessarily being the big villain again, I think that that's fine. But, like, I don't mind them saying, like, this is the end, like, this is the end of the Mysterio plot for Spider-Man. That we're done with that. We don't need to, like, we're gonna, and we're going to move on to something else. I don't mind that so much. Like, I don't know if it's... I don't even want to say it's always the right idea, but I think it gets bemoaned a lot from comic fans. And it's just like... I it's not a one to one medium. If a new Spider Man movie was coming out every six months, I feel differently. But like, I'm not gonna miss. I, I would rather see them do way more things with Spider Man than spend any more time with Mysterio again. Now, a- I don't a- believe AC. A- go, go ahead. Before you get ready to go, hold on. Bring yes. bring yes. Jake up on the screen. I want him to see. I want to see his face when I say this. Okay. I want to. I want to say this to his face. Jake, I hear what you're saying. Okay, and I and I understand you got the big badge, you beat them. They you once you win, it should be over. That should be the game. I understand. And you should go down the Rose Gallery. I understand that as well. But have you ever considered that the rest of the Rose Gallery sucks? And that maybe we don't want to see you fight against Ebony Maw in the sequel, you know, like I want to see Thanos again. Round two. What's the best thing about boxing? The rematch. Right, you get the yeah, first that's fight. True. That's true. And then you go bring it, bring it back. He real mad now. We about to see what this brother got. I want to see Foreman and I want to see Ali. Oh, I want to see Frazier and Ali. I want to see it more than once. I know that much. I know I don't want to just see it one time and I'm just like, whatever. Get out of here. <laughs> hey, so in terms of Jake's point, I will say. It, when it comes to certain characters, I do believe you can get away with killing them off. However, when it comes to certain, especially the Spider-Man Rogues Gallery, I think is a little bit of a different case. Where uh, back in Homecoming, we got uh, Vulture oh, yeah. and Scorpion <laughs> uh, surviving that first movie. Even though I don't know what the fuck Sony doing, that's a whole nother story. But you bring you bring them, you bring somebody like those folks back. And then you could really have another fight. And then, of course, you're talking about Wilson Fisk. Like, think about Wilson Fisk and Daredevil. Them two could fight for years and years and years and years and years and years. And I would not get tired of it at all because exactly. those characters There's are no iconic. need to bring in Stilt Man for season six of Daredevil. <laughs> Run it back with Wilson Fisk. Let's go. Okay. Stilt Man, though, I mean, there's, there's some potential there. I'm kidding. Um, but no, the, AC, do have man is the Jason Tatum of the dream team that is the Vogue <laughs> gallery of Spider-Man and Daredevil. I, he wouldn't get a minute off the bench for me. Absolutely not. No. I, I don't blame you for that. I don't blame you for that all. But the, the, Jake, that was a good take. My take. All right. I've been work, I've been workshopping this one for a little bit, and I've kind of mentioned it on the pod before. But now, with everything happening the way it has, and one of another person's hot take will allow me to uh, talk about this a little more in detail. But I do believe that the MCU next year will be twenty twenty five. I do believe that the MCU will be done before twenty thirty five. I do believe it will be over. I think mm. they they will be done. I think we are now headed into its actual end game, not to make the pun, just based off of everything they're doing. The Robert Downey Jr. saying that Kevin Feige just had an idea and said, oh, let's just do Doctor Doom for the 
for the sake of it. It didn't seem like a very inspired choice. It feel, felt like a, hey, we need to do something right now to get this off, get this off of the bad place that we're in after the Jonathan Major situation. And I think just from a from a perspective of ideas, it's hard to continue to do this for so long. It's been 16 years going on 17. It's going to go another 10? I don't think so. So I believe the MCU before 2035 will conclude. Yeah, I think the only way that I think that that's not doesn't end up being true is if their X-Men reboot is really successful. I think that might not be true, but like I'm pretty dubious of that and i also think that they're the fact that like they're holding on to hugh jackman as wolverine and all that like i think that they're pre i'll say this if they don't do a full reboot of x-men you will be right because they're, they're just gonna run out of talent of you know people yeah. are gonna age out they're gonna run out of new characters to keep things fresh and like i also don't think that that's the worst thing in the world most movie franchises don't last this oh long. no this is unprecedented but yeah. also but just in the whole totality of it the idea that people could think that they that this can go on forever and ever. It's like folks are saying, why don't we do a, a real legitimate Doctor Doom backstory? Because I don't. Because if you listen to these comments and you listen to the way that they're talking, I think they know that they don't have that much time left. So, I, it's I, beyond time. I they don't they know that they don't have the space to play around like that like yes, they're like yes, we don't yes. we don't ha- we we're, we're we have two outs on us we can't be playing small ball like we're, we're, this is not the situation to do that you gotta hit for the fences and sometimes you just strike out yep joey gallo are y'all are y'all done y'all done talking yes y'all okay yes yes first of all i have tremendous respect for everything y'all created here mc university you know i appreciate y'all inviting me on here you brothers i always have a good time Every single time I'm on it. And, and and I tell people, come watch me, you know, look at the clip. I share the clips. I put it on my Instagram, everything. But what y'all just said is by far the stupidest thing I've ever heard two people say. We are talking about Marvel. Okay, we're talking about Disney, a corporation that will pull Mickey Skeleton out the grave to sell it to kids in perpetuity. And of course, with comic books, I mean, these comic books have been around for so long. There's no end in sight. Bruce Wayne is perpetually 37 years old since I was a kid. Now you are telling me that at some point, the corporate overlords and the the people that run this are going to stop trying to swing for the fences for billions of dollars? Okay, you got them taking, they're taking movies from Fox, from Fox, and they are making a billion dollars with movies from Fox, more money than Fox ever made with Deadpool. Now you're telling me 10 years from now, that's not a plan? They're going to go into the shareholders meeting and they're going to say, hey guys, I'm sorry, we're done making money with this? That is egregious that y'all would even say that. I, I mean, it's all, it's like a poor comedy that I'm listening to here right now. I'm very disappointed in both of y'all, but I respect you brothers. And, and of course, you know, I, I will always come back. But it's just what y'all are saying right now. That's not how that's not how money is made. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, you know. That's honestly not, not a bad point about like, I don't know why I'm betting against the mouse. I mean. Oh, not point. betting against the mouse, but you know, when, when you try to aim yeah. for the stars with the hot take, you got they'll, 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 they'll reboot it. They'll reboot it before yeah. they before I they think, end. I think a point in that wonderful delivery rod that I think mm-hmm. is worth making is like the end of the MCU is like a, will be a very definite thing, and like if they're if it slows down or whatever, and they're only doing like one movie a year and like maybe one television show. Like, that's not the end. Like, in the same way that Star Wars right now is in a halting period, it's not the end of Star Wars. So I think that is a good point about it maybe not being the end. I think that that, you know, Rob, once again, always insightful. That's why we have you on. Oh, yeah. Tremendous I appreciate stuff, you. Tremendous. I appreciate you good brothers for that. You know, I you know, I come in on here, I try to bring it every single time. So, I'm a, you know, I'm never, but I'm never going to let y'all just be wrong in my face. I mean, we just not going to mm-hmm. insult the America and we're not going to insult each other like that. Not, no, nah, we too intelligent. 
goodness gracious, that was tremendous. So we have all given our hot takes, and now we go to. The I, I have two more hot takes. Okay, oh, you do? It. Oh, by by all means, go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> now the first one is this group. You know the the tree group. Yep. Yeah. Vin Diesel's greatest cinematic performance, bar none. <sighs> Over the Fast and Furious, over Reddit, and over that terrible Italian role he played where he was trying to convince the jury to be in love with him so he could go home. The group... Find me guilty. He's never made me cry before until he was group. That's a good... That's a really good question. Hmm. Wow. And I seen Boy I would say the... I seen them all. I would... Yeah, I would say that the only competition I would have is there are moments in Fast Five that are good, and then the dream sequence in Fast Nine, maybe not the best acting he's ever done, but definitely the best thing he's ever done as, like, an artist. Um, But, you know, honestly, the whole point about crying is right, and the thing about him, you're talking about stilt man, the fact that, you know, Vin Diesel does that performance on stilts because he wants to feel tall— that's acting. Like, that's like, people talk about Vin Diesel versus The Rock. The Rock is an entertainer. Vin Diesel thinks about himself first and foremost as an actor, and The yeah. Rock would not get on stilts. He would just be like, what? This is, I'm Dwayne Johnson. I'm just like, I am Groot, but not that's, Vin. That's a fact. And I love that brother, Dwayne Johnson. That's a good brother. You know, that's mm-hmm. he, he, play, he calls it like he sees it. You know, he's a success story all the way from the WWE to being a, a yeah. million-dollar man. You know, the helm and franchises. You know, I still feel like his entries in Fast and Furious took it to another level. So I definitely want to make sure that brother gets his props right there. But I, I absolutely agree with you, Jake, and I, which is really me agreeing with myself, if I have to say. But exactly. I absolutely agree sure. with you on that. I'm 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 very impressed with this take. Um, oh, and I then the last hot this, take. Yeah. I haven't really thought this one through. I'm I'm gonna be honest. Okay, this one. But I'm that's a, those nervous. are the best takes, though. Those, those, those are, are the, the best, best takes. Ones. Yes, yes, yes. The matter of fact, I'm not even sure it's a hot take. It's just an idea. Okay, I just came from Alien Resurrection. Or re- what was no mm-hmm. Romulus. Okay, I went to yeah, I went to high school with a brother named Romulus. Played linebacker. He was pretty good, <laughs> but. That, that's neither here nor that. That's neither here nor that. Does that have nothing to do with that? I saw Alien Romulus, and it was pretty controversial because they brought back a character where the actor in real life had passed on. And so they're using the CGI. You know, they're using the, the auto-tune or the AI on the voice. Like, they doing all of that. You know, they talked to his family. His family was okay auto-tune. with it. You know, they made sure that it was fine. CGI Chadwick Boseman. No. You're not going to find <laughs> another black... There's no other T'Challas on the planet. No, I have saw the cast list. Y'all was down to Tyrese. Tyrese can't be <laughs> T'Challa. No. no. You might as well dig this brother up from the grave if you're going to do that. If you're going to besmirch his name. Either you go CGI Chadwick or there's just no more T'Challa. I'm okay with no nah. T'Challa. Yeah. But I I'm think not there's okay no more T'Challa. With Tyrese. I think there's no more T'Challa for two reasons. One, I think that I actually don't think that Chavik's family would probably be okay with it. And so the no. reason why they're able to do that thing in Alien Romulus, which I actually don't think the effect works that well to begin with, but it's because he's stationary the whole time. Uh, and it'd be kind of hard to do action sequences. Um, also, well, also, I I'm also, just... let me say this because I, you know what? Tyrese, that's a good brother. Okay. I, mm-hmm. I don't mean to insult Tyrese, but he. But Tyrese, if you listen, you know. Come on now. I saw you crying on the Breakfast Club. I'm very sympathetic to it as a black man. You know, I I think we should be able to be vulnerable. You know, I'm sorry that he got divorced from that that woman that he doesn't like anymore and stuff. And uh, I appreciate that he tried to warn Vin Diesel that The Rock was coming to try to take over the Fast and Furious franchise. Clearly, that was true. Clearly, that was true. We saw what he did over there with the DCEU. He ran that into the ground with Black Adam. Once again, I respect Dwayne The Rock Johnson, too. That's no disrespect to him. But Tyrese, come on. You you not you not to chop. Okay, you can't do the accent. He going to sound like he from Memphis if we let you do it. So I'm so with that with all that said, if you're going to try to recast the child, then just might as well bring back Chad with with the new technology. Maybe you get 10 years down the road and we got the better AI or something. But as of right now, I'm fine with it being sure. 
Cause I don't want to see. I don't. I'm not saying I want to see this. I'm saying it's better than any other idea I've heard. I have to say, this is a great segue into the first one I was going to read. I was. I was actually planning on reading this first hot take first, and you perfectly made it that I can read uh-huh. it. Let's do it. JKL from our Discord. He says his hot take is to Saint T'Challa Jr. was not earned at all. It was the dumbest move of BP2, and I'm team hashtag no recast. What say you? Okay, I agree that uh, it was unearned in a way because I think that, and this goes to, of course, and I know I always bring this up, my famous quotes in the Wall Street Journal, of I think if you're going to have a characters have a secret child, it is. It's kind of annoying where it's like, well, these are characters that, that at the very most we saw them like make eyes at each other and kiss once. Like, I actually think it would be more effective if, and obviously this would be work, not work with the timeline necessarily, but I think it would be more effective if like it was revealed that you know Nikia was pregnant when they first went to see her. Like, I I just think that yeah. like the idea of like th- these characters that we had never actually seen be really intimate. Not that I need, to, you know, you know what I mean. Um, that they all of a sudden had a character that are like the fact that they were really unclear about what their relationship was like felt it did feel like oh this is just a nice moment it, it didn't work. in the theater it was very nice but I think also like and I, I didn't realize this until I saw the people's reactions to it I thought that that was just a nice little Easter egg I didn't actually expect them to like be putting anything on that character because he's also really still too young and honestly I really hope they don't like I hope it is just kind of an Easter egg, a nice moment because I don't need. I don't need a you know twelve year old to be taking the mantle of Black Panther just so the Black Panthers think T'Challa like that. I don't need that because as a character we have no attachment to. It was a fun little moment. It made me cry in the theater. And so like if they're gonna try to convince us that that's the new Black Panther, I absolutely agree with JKL that that is completely under. Mm, what do you think about that, Rod? Well, I think Jake was making a lot of he's making a lot of sense right there because if you're gonna have his kid on the screen and you never showed. T'Challa taking Nakia to, to Pound Town on the screen. I mean, we're talking about Lapita Nyong'o. Okay, Lord, Lord have mercy. You know what I'm saying? We all seen the movie. You know, we see what each other see out there. I know what the you brothers know, was thinking in the in the in the. In, at least in my theater, I know what the brothers was thinking. Okay, when she got into Just that swimsuit and yeah. got under that water, yeah. you know, to go down there and, and save Sherry. and Joshua Jackson. And Joshua Jackson was also thinking it. And he was thinking it, too. That's a man of good taste, okay? He two for two, as far as I know. So, you know, all I'm saying is, look, if you're going to show a child, we know how children are made. You know, and this goes back to why another hot take, but this goes back to why I feel like Eternals was unfairly criticized because it gave us everything that we said we wanted. Okay, they was they was chopping case to smith the rings up in there. And now and mm. now you got this movie, you can't show the chopping the case to smith the rings. So we gotta sit up here and and use our minds, use our imaginations. You're in a movie. Get out there and get the smashing. So yeah, I I think this this is a hot take that I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and co-sign. Oh wow. When you rephrase it like that, I disagree with my own take to an extent. <laughs> but like I don't I I just feel like it, we we jump from they have like a complicated history to they were secretly you know you know making a, a baby and I'm like there's steps in between that we don't need to see the cakes but I'm just taking I'm just taking your point to its fruition mm-hmm. okay because if you know I'm what? the director if I'm that. Ryan Coogler how am I going to show that they just had like a kiss like you don't have babies through osmosis that's not how that works at all. Mm-hmm. So I'm a I'm a want to see it, you know what I'm saying? I that's that's why I paid my ticket. I goes I would have seen Black Panther two three times if they would have had that scene in there, for sure. So I you know no disrespect to to Ryan Coogler or uh, Napita Nyong'o uh, or, or or to that child that played T'Challa. No disrespect to any of them. I love the movie. No, I love the franchise. I love what they doing. There. It was a great emotional moment when it happened. Um, the scene was very touching. I think everything that led into what that scene was, was kind of, it was not only heartbreaking, but also at the same time, like it kind of gave you like the new, the new hope idea. So I, Mm -hmm. I get it from that aspect. 
but to the takes point, yes, I think it is. You can make the you can make the the argument that they did go for the for the pop at the end. They did go for the emotional tugging on your heartstrings at the end, instead of doing the thing that I mean, Shuri is a Black Panther in the comics. That's something that happens. So there's no necessary need. Like it's almost like folks. And I understand the, uh, I understand to a degree, like, yes, you want to, you want to have your, you want to have your regular Black Panther. You want to have your T'Challa version Black Panther. But this is such a unique circumstance that sometimes as in Ryan Coogler, not wanting to recast, I think it's fair to just not recast and move on. I think it's okay. Um, you don't have to. You, you didn't even have to do this. Now, I understand why they wanted to do this because they wanted to not only um, do something as far as the the next uh, part of the bloodline and and kind of tell that story at the same time, but also if you had done the Shuri thing, I mean, you're going to have the certain section of people who are always going to be mad about everything, yeah. which there's nothing that you can mm-hmm. do about these people. Yeah. Or you could forge a new path with Shuri, which I will say to Letitia Wright's credit in that movie, mm-hmm. I thought the way that she handled, especially the third act into the end, mm-hmm. I thought she did a great job. I, th- and, I thought yeah. she had a great performance. They, g- they so. gave her they gave her a shot. I mean, an opportunity. They didn't give her a shot, famously. But they gave her an opportunity and she took, she took it to its full extent. Yes, she she was able to run the ball. She was able to run the ball and take it to the house and finish off the finish off the movie, mm-hmm. which which I, you got to give her credit for. So for me personally, I think in terms of JKL's take, it's an A plus. I think take. it's a I think it's, it's a, a good, good take. take. It's a good, good take. It's pretty spicy. It's pretty hot. And I see what you did there, yeah. Jake. That was good. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, and so for our for our next take, our pal Paul says. A Gambit movie with Channing Tatum would do bigger box office numbers than Captain America Winter Soldier. So I need to look this up because I need I need to look up how much Captain America the Winter Soldier. Oh, please do. Because I my, my take is going to be that that's actually not a hot take at all because that movie made less money than I think people would assume. That's I'm looking it up. It's loading. Um, unfortunately, box office mojo doesn't really work anymore, so I have to use another site. Um, but I think that he is right that it would make a lot of money because I think that you can tell just by the um, by the memes and stuff. Oh yeah, so Captain America: The Winter Soldier made seven hundred and fourteen million dollars worldwide. So I'm actually going to say I think that that take is correct, but I think it's pretty cold because actually that's not that high of a bar for mm, a Marvel movie. Mm. Rod, what you, is is this a lukewarm take? Is, do you think it's a little bit? Do you take it out the freezer and it's kind of like you need you need to microwave it a little bit? Well, first of all, what was his brother's name that wrote it? Who was this? Paul Bowl. Paul Bowl. Paul, I, I I appreciate him right now. He's a good brother to sit up there and sit He's in Australian. And, okay, he's a good mate. And uh, he sent that mm-hmm. in to everybody, and I appreciate that he did that. However, I think this might be one of the most egregious takes that we've heard tonight because... If you're going to make the Gambit movie, the reason Gambit works in Deadpool is because it's a joke. You know, it's a damn joke. It's a And it works in short bursts. It's a good five-minute joke. But when you try to extrapolate that to two hours, two and a, you know these damn Marvel movies, two and a half, three hours for some damn Gambit. So now I got to sit in here and watch him mumble for three hours? It's not as funny. So are we doing comedy? Or are we being serious? Now we being serious, you could just look from what he got on. That's not a serious role. That's not a serious man. Channing Tatum's a very funny man. I love that brother in 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street or 21 and a half, whatever they calling them with Ice Cube. I appreciate everything Jeff. he does. Okay, yeah, my name, yeah, I laughed. Amazing. And he was great in this too. But just because he wanted that don't mean he going to get it. That don't mean he going to be good at it, okay? Jalen Brown wanted to be on the dream team, but I don't want to see him out there driving to the right every single time, getting his pocket picked by Vasilid Michik and shit like that. I don't want to see that. Come on. Please. 
So I'm so I, I gotta disagree with this take. It, it, it not only would it not be a good movie, but it's no it's no way in hell is about to make more than the Winter Soldier. This will be another flop. It's gonna be like Ant Man three. Everyone's gonna say, "Oh, it's over for Marvel. It's the death of cinema. Why did they let him do this? It was fine when it was ten minutes in Deadpool. They took a good thing and they made it too bad. I don't I don't want to see that. And so I disagree with this brother." Paul, appreciate you writing in. That was that was incredible. Um, yeah, I don't even. Yeah, I think to Jake's point, I don't feel like this is the hottest uh, take in the world. And I understand your point, Rada, it, as far as it being such a joke. But I think the problem is with everybody generally. They just love the joke character. I have not seen such a response. Two, there's two things out of that that Deadpool and Wolverine movie that kind of stood out to me. And the main one that applies to this is the response to all of these bonus characters that we saw up yeah. here. It's been so overwhelm, overwhelmingly positive. Mm -hmm. um, you got Ryan Reynolds campaigning for Blade, Wesley Snipes to come back and do another Blade movie. So... I think if you put Channing Tatum, and I understand it's a joke, boy, let me tell you, buddy, I think I think jokes would work. Is I it really gonna be? I, is it gonna be as funny as that? That for the whole time? Because I just feel like once no. you start writing, once you have to write a movie for this guy, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm, gotta mm -hmm. take him through the paces. He got We gotta. Oh. We can't just be comic relief anymore. And that's that's a little more difficult to carry. And I, and the other question is yeah. when we talk about the box office, are we adjusting for inflation? Okay, because uh, I don't think so. Okay, so we're not even adjusting for inflation, but let's look at the box office, right? We don't have a lot of billion dollar movies anymore. There used to be a time Marvel put out something, you know, they shit into a can, billion dollars. That's what we that's what you do with a Marvel movie. <laughs> you get a billion dollars. We don't do that anymore. So reason that this Deadpool movie is such a hit is because no one's ever seen yeah. anything like yeah. this. But it's been a long time since Marvel's had a hit like this. I think maybe the last yeah. one was, was the Spider-Man's. Like maybe yeah, that probably. one. Yeah. yeah. So th I don't know that this is an achievement because we saying, oh, it's just 750 million. That's three quarters of a billion. I don't know if Gambit right. got three quarters right. of a billion. I, the thing for me is I always, the thing that really made me kind of completely disconnect quality from box office is when mm. I saw that like one of the top 10 highest grossing movies ever is Jurassic World Dominion. I'm like, no one gives a shit about mm. taste. But, but I think, you know what? You're right though. You're right that it, that Marvel's not where it used to be in shitting out, you know, billion dollars. So I, I will amend my take. That take is a little hotter than I originally gave it credit for. Um, and so yeah, th Paul, but uh, we, you know, much like Rod, I appreciate you writing in. Yes. Thank He's you, Paul. Brother. I appreciate yeah, yes, it's a very good brother. Very good brother. Uh, Foster's Australian for beer. Uh, just so, just so I might, might add that in. Mm -hmm. And so the next take that we have here from our pal film wanderer on the Discord, he says that cutting bait with Kang was a blessing in disguise. Not as compelling as Thanos or Zemo. Uh, Marvel with COVID trying to catch up on filming and trying to get things through and get this multiverse saga through. In fact, where we ended up is much better than if we had continued this Kang road. Jake, how do you feel about this? I wouldn't have agreed with it before Quantumania, but I think the way that that character just did not really come across for most people in that movie, um, I think that like, I think that the fact that the, that character did not pop in that movie in the way that he needed to, I will generally agree with this take. Not that I think it was a lost cause, but I think that if you're going to have a character that you're going to set up being like the big bad in a bunch of different versions, and there's not a huge exciting response to that being set up, then like you're really starting in a bad place. And so even if I personally was interested in the Kang saga... I think from a like audience eyeballs perspective, I think it's almost undeniable that 
it was not even before Jonathan Majors' issues, it was not going across as well as they wanted it to. Yeah. And so I need to see what they replace it with in t- in total before I make a f- final determination of whether I was blessing disguise. But I definitely think that it c- it could very easily because like the bar it has to clear is not that high. It's not like Kang was really firing on all cylinders to the general audience. Mm, mm, interesting point there. And and Rod, how do you feel about this thing? I have to say, first of all, before we even get started, uh, shout out to Film Wanderer. We appreciate you contributing to the show. That's a good brother. I know that brother uh, from the internet. I see him on Twitter all the time. He's always chiming in with some film takes that I, I find to be pretty pretty well thought out. Um, <clears throat> and for Jonathan Majors, of course, you know, that's a good brother, you know, other than the stuff that he's been getting into uh, in his personal life. He's a really good thespian. You know, he's an actor's actor. You know, I remember seeing him in the last black man in San Francisco. And I said, wow, this, he's got it. He's got the talent. So I don't think it's a talent problem necessarily. I think his performance as Kang was outstanding. You know, there were several times where I said this man is, he is chewing up the scenery, you know, like, like Jason Whitlock, just chewing everything up in sight. But <laughs> with that being said, Jonathan Majors dresses like an interstellar, antebellum, time-traveling freed man. And you can't have that lack of swag around the MCU as a person. Okay, this brother is drying up panties the way he is navigating life now. He he went from a sex symbol to, I don't, like, what is he? He looked like an extra from color purple now. So I don't think you want a dude with that lack of swag hanging around your franchise because it's just going to demean everything else. And that's before you get to this, to Kang. Kang, the, the conqueror who got conquered several times on screen by different characters. And I'm not even talking A-level characters. We talking Ant-Man. Ant-Man? Okay, this isn't Anthony Edwards for the Minnesota Timberwolves, Ant-Man. I'm talking Scott oh, Lang. We're talking a, a, a guy that's a two-bit thief. A heist artist. He's giving you the hands in front of his daughter? In front of America? I don't think so, brother. You let Thor's little brother get you up out of here. I'm sorry, but this character, it was a no-go. I agree with Film Wanderer. It's, it, it, we lucked out that he's out of here. And I'm sorry to to Megan Good and all that. Like, I respect that sister. She's a very intelligent, beautiful woman. But, and the role she's playing right now is a role of a lifetime, okay? I I don't know if it's, <laughs> she's become some type of meta, like, some type of actor that's just always in character, I guess. I don't know. She, she decided to take that Tyler Perry film a little too far, okay? <laughs> but... <laughs> But as far but as far as just Kang and these, I, I agree. We need to move on. We'll see if Robert Downey Jr. can do what he can do as as Doom. But I'll say this: we seen Robert Downey Jr. do it before, so there's no reason for me not to believe he could do it again. Uh, he has uh, RDJ has the clutch gene. He definitely has that. I do I do agree with that. So it's funny, like if you think about the Kang thing. I mean, you go back to Loki and the fact that they introduced this character in a TV show, which probably in some cases for, I think, most Marvel fans, you'd be like, yeah, this is a uh, this is cool that we finally get to see this character debut. He's supposed to be the big bad. However, when you do it in a TV show, it does. Regardless of the impact of the actor and the performance, you still like. There's a good portion of fans who, especially the the mainstream fans who are really only here for the movies and not looking around on Disney Plus for every single thing. There's going to be a lot of those portions of fans who are going to be like, wait a minute, I got to go watch a TV show so I can find out who this big villain is. And also, there's different versions of the villain. So if I kill, if they kill one, there's another one that's going to pop up. There's another one that's going to pop up and there's going to be one of them things. I don't know if I'm going to be all into that. I totally understand why people de- generally did not receive this well, especially when it seemed like things have been going slower in terms of building new characters and 
building this multiverse storyline. Wait a minute, there's variants here and variants there and all of that stuff. And then on top of that, your main villain gets his ass whooped by some ants. I mean, if you really think about it, that's what happened. He got his ass whooped by some ants. So, when it comes down to it, you know, regardless of Matrix's performance, it's just the Quantum Mania thing, and we've talked about it on this show before, it just looked terrible. And I think that you can't escape something looking as bad as it did, and then your main villain just getting yeeted by some ants and disappearing, and then it's like, oh, he's going to come back, but, I mean, what does that even mean? I mean, it's so funny to think about that post credit scene in Quantum Mania now, thinking about everything that's happened after the fact. And you look at it now and you're kind of like, especially after everything, you feel kind of, I mean, obviously not glad that the things happened the way that they did, but if this gives Marvel a chance to do something different, something perhaps with Robert Downey Jr. in tow, something that you can at least do something with that can really again just give you another big time chance to go up the box office charts because i think the way things were going regardless of whether something had happened with majors or not i don't think we would have seen the same success that we saw in infinity war no, and end game and it was clear that it was headed that way and you could tell by the response at comic con that fans regardless of whether people on the internet feel differently or not, the fans there were extremely shocked and excited and it provided a jolt to the MCU that was necessary for it at this time because people are just looking for a reason to watch again and watch and feel like it's important to watch. And now we have that. We have something to look forward to. So from that standpoint, Film Wanderer, A plus on that take. That's a great take. And let me add one more thing. You know, I gotta, yes. I, I gotta, you know, pick put pull Jake up on the screen. I want to see his face when I say this, because, because this is a, <clears throat> this is a point that he continues to make, and I agree with it. Okay, why didn't we see Kang smash Janet when they were stuck yep. in that dimension for so long? I'm supposed to believe this brother who has a 12 pack abs with cum gutters. Is just sitting up in here next to this lady who hasn't had any in a long time. And they just they just friends, they just platonic. I knew they I knew they didn't respect them as a villain when they didn't put that scene in there. Right there, I said, Y'all don't believe in this brother. Mm. Yep. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. Oh. He said he said the thing. Oh man, he really said the thing. Oh man. Oh mm-hmm. Rod. Yep. Rod, you you are tremendous, man. You are tremendous. Um, I will just say, like, in of all the things that we've heard in the history of MC University, this is up there with the very best of them of all time. Don't don't jinx it. What's the next hot take? All right, the next hot take is Montel, our pal from the Discord. My hot take. And this is about Robert Downey Jr. He will not give the best villain performance of this next phase by the time Doomsday arrives. So this, I'm, I'm assuming in the way that he worded this, what he was meaning to say is that even with Doomsday coming out, there will be a, a better villain performance because we still got Brave New World. We still have Thunderbolts. We still have allegedly the... The, the Blade movie, but, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll mm-hmm. joke, we'll joke about Yup, and Detox is coming out next week, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we still have some MCU movies potentially coming out in the next couple of years before Doomsday comes out. Obviously, Fantastic Four is another one of them. So, what do we think about this take in terms of villain performances? I mean, it's hard to evaluate just because it's... The thing about it is, and I, this is me punting, but I think it's a fair punt, is... I, it's a hot take, but I can't make any judgment on it because it is two variables at once like it's an all uh, comparing an unknown to an unknown now i would say if you to- if you if someone from the future just came back and said hey rob down jr was pretty good but ralph innocent as a uh, galactus was incredible i would believe you that's what i'll say that that's my take mm, there you go and how about you rob i don't think first of all who wrote who wrote it who's who wrote this 
This was Montel. Montel, first of all, I appreciate you, brother. I love that song. This is how we do it. You know, it's that's that was my jam back in the day. Okay, when I was in the club, I was getting it to this is how we do it. Okay, so I I I'm gonna always respect your impact on the culture um and everything else you've done. Um, however, I find this take to be egregiously stupid. And here's why. You want me to take Robert Downey Jr. against the field? Of course I'm going to take RDJ against the field. He put the Marvel Universe on his back. There's no MCU without RDJ. Absolutely. So I will take that bet 100 times out of 100. That's a bad man. That RDJ, he's a bad brother. Okay, he he's been he was just great in Oppenheimer. Okay, we talk about an Oscar winner. How many Oscar winners are gonna be playing the villain in these other movies? And then you can't even you can't even try to cheat me out of this because just because Galactus is gonna be in Fantastic Four, that don't mean we won't see RDJ as Doom or something like that up in there. Mm-hmm. We true, don't true, know true. who's gonna be that. Galactus ain't never did no acting. He just e planets. He Jason Whitlock. Okay. Yeah, did you tell the people about that, you bitch? Jason Whitlock, you son of a bitch. How about you do that? What I'm saying right now, though, is RDJ versus anybody. Matter of fact, anybody's. You could get a team of actors to be villains like they're going to do with the Thunderbolts. And even then, I'm still taking RDJ over all those people because that's a bad man. I think it's difficult. It's very difficult to see when you look at the current field of films coming out. Unless you tell me that Harrison Ford is going gonna, is gonna to pull something from deep, have a hashtag washed agenda, one last ride performance, that he's going to be RDJ. I don't, I, I just, it's, it's very difficult for me to see. I just, it's just very difficult for me to, to see that happening. Yeah. And then, I mean, it seems like as far as Thunderbolts is concerned, um, JLD, she seemed like she the she she seemed like the she the villain. And I and all I get is some chuckles from from good old JLD. I salute the chuckles, but still at the end of the day, it's just some chuckles. And let so, me and let me add a, this too. Yeah. The other thing yes, working please. for RDJ, the bar is so low. Yeah. People are intrigued. But they they saying, oh, this this the end of the MCU. It's over for them. They about to go one in sixteen. This they're not a playoff team. They gonna be back in the lottery. Okay. Well, when this man gets on that field and he gets in that huddle and he gets behind that line and we see him do what he do, like he always does. And you're crying when he's saying, I hate you 3,000 or whatever he's going to be saying this time. You're going to change every. You're going to all of a sudden, everybody's going to remember. Oh, that's right. He's RDJ. I think we are going to be incredibly surprised at what they cook up for him. And when he does one of these surprising character things that you wouldn't expect, something along the lines of what you just said, Rod. I think folks will be floored by this. I think there is a incredible opportunity here for Robert Downey Jr. As he said himself, new mask, same task. And you got the Russo's coaching. Okay, yes. so you it's not it's not just RDJ. Okay, they the Russo's not gonna put out no trash movie for the MCU. Now, if they want to go over to Netflix and get a check, I'm not gonna begrudge those brothers. Get your check, get your money. I, I'm I'm never hating on anybody getting the bag. Okay, but y'all know what y'all did when y'all went over there and, and wasted everybody's time. But now that y'all back here with with the MCU, nah, we I, they I can't even I can't even uh, I can't even fathom this not being a great performance. It won't be RDJ's yeah. fault if it don't work. I'll tell you that for sure. Uh, shout out to Jake's favorite movie, The Gray Man. <laughs> Jake doesn't even have a rebuttal. He doesn't even no, have a like just, cause it's, cause the thing is, like, oh, The Gray Man is man, like... Oh, man, that's great. The Gray Man is a movie in the same way that, like, Soylent <laughs> Packets are food. It's like, I suppose it is. <laughs> It has like the qualities of a movie and it has like an actor. <laughs> but 
Yeah. Oh, man. Great stuff about you guys. Okay. We have another hot take from Wasimus. My hot take. Shout out to Waz. Deadpool and Wolverine was a better ending for the Jackman Wolverine than Logan was. Uh, I would say no. I would disagree. Because I think that the Wolverine that we meet in this movie, his traumas are not really the same as, like, it, it, it is kind of a non sequitur in a lot of ways. And I think that, like, the whole bit about him letting all the X-Men die, being something we see off screen, that's that we don't see, that's not completely off screen, I think is just inherently less satisfying than, like, us actually spending a whole movie living with old man Logan. Um, so yeah, I, I just, I just flatly disagree. It, it is a hot take. The heat on it is scorching. So I appreciate it. Yes. Yes. And how about you, Rod? Oh yeah. This, uh, this take here. Who wrote this? Wasimus. Okay. I respect the name. It's almost like Rodimus. So, you know, off tops, I want to give you all due props for coming up with that name. It's a great name, but however, Logan had me crying. In the theater, okay, and I don't even bang with them Fox X Men movies like that. Like they they was all right to me, you know. Some of them was X Men to me, but when they got to that one, okay, and then, and I love Wolverine. I love the comic books. Okay, I thought it was they always bastardized that character on the screen. You know, I didn't like that Hugh Jackman was six foot nine playing a man that's supposed to be like four foot ten. I, I I had a lot of misgivings. But when he got to that movie and he was old, and he's sitting across from Charles Xavier, who is having dementia, okay? And you talking about him taking a little Mexican girl, X-23, under his wing and raising her, being a father that he could not be for the other X-Men that were in Xavier's school for the gifted. You going to tell me that after crying to this brother giving up his life, that you just able to look at these jokes and playing Madonna at the end and say this a better ending? It might be a happier ending, but that don't make it better. Okay, a movie where I am laughing at Channing Tatum for 15 minutes cannot be better than the ending that we got with the real Logan. They dug up his skull in this movie and was playing with his bones. That's blasphemy. I was offended by that scene. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let you sit up and have you right that it's a hot take. It's it's hotter than the sun. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's 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 hotter than Robert F. Kennedy's breath, I'm sure. But it's not, but that don't make it a good take just because it's hot. Uh, was I when you when you wrote this in the Discord at the time when I read it, I said, "Well, goddamn, this is this is exactly what we want from this episode. We want the hottest takes." Now, I will say, as much as I love and enjoy Deadpool and Wolverine, and I really do, and I and I find myself thinking about this movie even more, as paper thin as it is from a plot standpoint, I don't give a shit. This movie is incredible. I love it to the heavens. I can't wait till it comes out on digital. I will watch it a million times. But to Rod's point and to Jake's point, as far as Logan is concerned, I do think Logan is the jewel in the shit of the Fox universe. That movie, from start to finish, there are too many integral moments. There are too many surprising shocking moments from a thematic standpoint that build to the crescendo of the end of him taking that serum knowing that it's not going to have the desired effect for a very long time and he ends up dying at the hands of x24 and listen that moment was the is the point of wolverine is the point of the of the of the begrudging hero who has an anger problem, who eventually realizes there's something bigger than himself and he's willing to sacrifice his life. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the meaning of what being a hero is. So sure, you can have your happy endings. Happy endings are great. I love a good happy ending. I love 
I said I said when Twisters ended, the, the two of them them should kiss. They should have a nice kiss, and that's how the movie should end. We should have happy endings and more happy endings in movies. But in this case, as far as Logan is concerned, I think it was a wonderful capper to Logan's story in that universe. And that's why I feel like bringing him out to the MCU, you can do this version of the ending and give him, give a different version of Logan a different ending. So, yes, incredibly hot take, but I am with the boys here. I do ultimately disagree. I do think Logan hit home where it needed to hit home. So, yes. All right. And, okay. Maurice. Maurice, uh, Maurice had a couple of these. I want to read his... I want to read his main one because this was something that Rod referred to earlier when we were talking about movies in general. He called The Eternals a top-tier MCU movie. Boys, uh, Rod, I'll start with you in this case. Give me a tease. Give me your thoughts. Well, who was who wrote this one in? This was Maurice. Maurice, Maurice I appreciate you writing in. I, I I appreciate you took it seriously. You gave us a extremely hot take. I mean, this is this, like this might be hotter than the last take, and the last take was pretty damn hot as far as I'm concerned. But uh, if you would have said it was underrated, if you would have mm-hmm. said it was over criticized, if you would have even said it's what a lot of Marvel fans claim to have wanted. You know, we got LGBTQ inclusion, okay? We got adult level of, of, of relationships and sexuality. We got all kinds of fighting. We got these uh, kind of an insular story that doesn't necessarily have to connect to everything else. Not a shit ton of Easter eggs. To, oh, you got to watch this so you can understand the TV show. None of that. So you had something when you started writing this. But then you said top 10. Do you understand what top 10 is? I mean, I don't want to look into the Oxford Dictionary, but I believe it's near the top. Now, there's no way that this movie is near the top of the MCU. <laughs> you gonna make me choke the people that. that gave us Black Panther, that gave us Endgame, Infinity War, that gave us Winter Soldier. That gave us Civil War. I don't even know if this movie is better than any of the Ant-Mans except the third one. So to say top 10, it's like you offended the whole show. Have you not been learning nothing from AC and Jake? They put in this hard work for y'all every every week. Are you not even listening? Because clearly it's not top 10. That's... That's ridiculous. You you must have just wrote in just to have some fun. You just wanted to say something. So I guess you got that off your chest. Thank you for the laughs. But it's no way you truly believe this take. This is a ridiculous take. <laughs> I, I, I'll just say this. I'll say what I always say about Eternals. Eternals works better as a TV show than a movie. If they had done it differently as far as a Disney Plus vehicle, I think it would have worked a lot better. The movie is just too many characters. It's too much stuff to follow. And it's just very difficult when you got poor <laughs> Brian Tyree Henry blowing up Hiroshima. Mm-hmm. That whole that whole thing was just yep. rough, generally speaking. Mm-hmm. I cannot I cannot in any way agree with this take, yeah. but it is flaming. It's Kamal Najiani did steroids at PEDs yeah. for uh-huh. this movie. I feel the uh-huh. worst for him. Cause he was he had to do drugs and get in the gym, and he's a damn comedian. You don't need to have abs to make me laugh, brother. That's not right. So I they wasted his time, and you wasted our time with this hot take. <laughs> Go ahead, Jake. I was just gonna say that. Yeah, I agree with everything you guys are saying. I think that like I love the idea of Eternals, and I love the things it's going for. But, and I'm someone who, from, from the start, I was rooting for it the whole time. You can go back and listen to old pods when we were previewing it. I'm like, this really could be great. They have a great director. The movie looks really good. They have a really awesome cast. And sometimes it just doesn't work. There's a lot of movies that on paper I really would love to love. And I, I don't know if there's an MCU movie that I want to love more on paper than Eternals. Like, I really, really do want to love it. And it just, like, 
the things that don't work about it are really kind of boring nuts and bolts stuff. It's bloated. It's a little boring. There's too much going on. That's like, and those are really obvious complaints, but like they're all true about it. And so I can't, I cannot endorse this take. No, it's very hot, but I can't endorse it. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Maurice, for writing in that. Uh, you definitely got the flaming take portion of this correct. But as far as the actual take itself, I, I can't, I can't roll with you, big dog. So, uh, our pal Lexus, Lexus May, on the Discord says Marvel should buy Ryan Coogler's untitled vampire film, call it Blade Origins, tack on a post credit scene with Mahershala Ali, then pay Ryan to write and direct the imaginary Blade movie with Mahershala. If they start now, they can make the November 2025 deadline still. Jake, what do you make of this? I mean... Yeah, if they're able to do that, if they're able to make that work, why not? <laughs> but like, you know, um, I think that that's a great idea. Uh, if they're able to make it work, um, but I will say that if Ryan Coogler is making a vampire movie on his own, I can't imagine that he did not have conversations with Marvel about Blade. Like, I don't think that they just woke up one day and he was making a vampire movie on his own. I'm free. I would guess that that movie is being made that way because he probably asked about Blade. They had a certain level of conditions they wanted to meet. And then he's like, okay, then I'll do my own thing. But if they can make that work, then like, do I want one of the best directors ever to make a comic book movie to make another comic book movie and tie it in and be more original? No shit. But like, it's a good thing to make it work. Yes. Yes. And how about you, Mr. Rod? First of all, this is an excellent question. Uh, to, to the person that's sitting in, I respect everything that you, you were thinking when you put this out there. Um, I The only thing I would change about this take, I would not say Ryan Coogler. Okay, he's busy. He, we, he's done these films already. We know his style. We know how he gets down and everything, and that's cool. And I know exactly what you want from the film. You want, like, a cool director that's black that gets Blade's blackness right on the screen, because that matters. I would just say Jordan Peele. If I could have mm. my brothers a pick pick a brother to do this project, I would like to see Jordan Peele's take on Blade as a black American vampire more so than I would like to see Ryan Coogler do it. No, no offense to either of those brothers. Those are good brothers that have made some good products that I really respect. Yes. yes. Um, I mean, for me, the Blade movie, oh my God. I feel like, I feel like I have lived three lives since uh -huh. Mahershala Ali uh, came out in Comic-Con in 2019. And this movie has just been the most, the most developmental hell that you could ever have in a movie where... You know, I just realized this, that if yeah, this Blade up? movie doesn't happen... In like fifteen years, when they make another meta, when they get they make like another Deadpool movie, we can have Mahershala Ali come in and play Blade like Gambit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> oh my god! I just you know what this take from a strategic standpoint, mm -hmm. I think is great. I think it's everything that you would want in terms of us wanting the Blade movie to happen. By the way. We want the Blade movie to happen. This is not us not wanting the Blade movie mm -hmm. to happen, but really what the hell is going on over there mm -hmm. is the question I'd like to ask, and I'd like to get a goddamn answer. Yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. This is this is ridiculous. And now I got Ryan Reynolds going more, more Wesley Snipes Blade. Yeah. Let's do a Wesley Snipes Blade. I'll say this. Blade. I'll say this. He's completely... Uh, there's a hot take. He's won me over. I'm like, if they're going to do a Blade movie, they should do Old Man Blade with Wesley Snipes. I'm sorry, yes. That's how he kind of won me over with it. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> and and that's and that's the sad part about it is because I'm kind of like... I'm over it at this point, yeah. man. Just please, just uh, just br just bring all Wesley. Hashtag Watch Agenda. Mm -hmm. Let's bring him back one last ride. Let's do it. One more Blade movie. They, they with could Wesley call it Rusty but... Blade, because by that time, oh! by that time, oh! he's gonna he gonna be so old. There's no, there's nothing's gonna work right. Maybe you can even have Marshall in there. It's like the understudy because yeah. he gonna need I, some I help. Can't, I can't, I can't ice skate downhill. My damn knees. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 oh man just one wrong slip the bad back he creaks the back oh my back he'll do a toby Maguire. they call me the day walker because i can't really run anymore <laughs> <laughs> i use i use a walker now <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man, thank you, Lexus May, for your take. That appreciate it. A couple more before we wrap up. Uh, Montel once again. He has a he has a he has a take here, and I don't know if it's necessarily a hot one, but let's see. Hawkeye is among the top five indiv- individual seasons of the Disney Plus shows. I don't agree necessarily, but I think the broadness of five makes that not hot, that hot of a take. Yes. I that, agree. That's exactly I agree. what I think. I'm offended that you didn't take this serious, Maurice, because your first question felt more nope, serious. Oh, this is actually Montel. This is Montel. Oh, Montel. 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 oh not, not Montel. You gave us a hit. No, but I still play that to this day. Your first take was pretty good, but this second one? No, 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 no. This is this is the Montel that dated Kamala Harris. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, you know what, brother? Uh, I did like your show back in the day. Okay, you mm-hmm. did some good interviews. You brought up a lot uh-huh. of people. It was pretty inclusive. You talked to people of all mm-hmm. past. I love when you used to ambush the clan with the like Black Panthers <laughs> and stuff like that. That was uh-huh. amazing television. That being said, Montel, in this case, I feel like this take was not hot and you tried to slide it in like it was a hot take. It's like when people say, give me an NFL sleeper team and then you pick somebody like, oh, uh, the the Cincinnati Bengals is my Super Bowl sleeper. Well, that's not that damn sleep. So I right. feel like this did this was not that damn sleep of a pick to yeah. say top five Hawkeye. That's that's if anything, I'm offended yeah. that you wrote in because I would have it. I would have it at like six. I think I would say that I personally like both seasons of Loki, WandaVision, She Hulk, and Miss Marvel, and then I'd have Hawkeye six probably. <laughs> right, yeah. and then you know, very if you took a poll. Very, I bet if you go on Rotten Tomatoes, it's probably in the top five. It's probably rated close yeah. enough. Like, so I, yeah, yeah, this is not a hot take. You, you, you really wasted yeah. our time with yeah. this one. Take it more serious yeah. next yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, AC, if you have nothing, I think we should move on. I don't even think we should, you know. Yeah, I, do, I, I don't. Um, I have two. I, I have two left. Mm-hmm. One, we will go from Lexus gives a take from friend of the show Kevin Garcia, mm-hmm. who says that Endgame was not a good sequel to Infinity War. They set up too many storylines in Infinity War that were dropped in Endgame. And just to give a couple of examples, uh, Thor experienced extreme loss and trauma, and it was played out like a joke. Infinity War was all about Thanos getting the gems, but he decided not to use them anymore in between movies. And there was a new version of Thanos in Endgame, so he had no connection to anyone outside of Gamora and Nebula. How did he know Stark? Rod, I'm going to lead off with you here. What do you think of this take? This is an egregious take. It's sad, honestly, that that you would try to grasp for something so low, to be honest, because those are not plot holes or drop storylines. You didn't like the way they resolved them. That's fine. You don't have to like it, but they did resolve them. You don't, you don't have to feel like, oh, I don't like that there was a joke, but Thor as a character has dealt with a lot of stuff that's traumatic through comedy. Okay. Like the loss of his mother, the death of his brother, then the death of his brother again for real this time. So we, so we talk the death, the entire loss of his home. Asgard is no more. So he, this man has always coped through trauma with, with comedy. When he first showed up, he was kicked out of Asgard. He was in, he was drinking beer, throwing him on the ground. So like, I, I think you just been missing what's going on with the characters. Uh, as for Thanos, when he used them stones, he had accomplished his mission. It wasn't, he's not a greedy person. They wrote him as a noble villain who just had, you know, he made some good points. A lot of people was trying to use up a lot of resources. And maybe if it was less people, we have more resources. I mean, I, I, I mean, we know about the 1%. Shout out to my man, Bernie Sanders. As a good brother, I respect that brother. Okay? Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying is this. It's a good sequel to that movie. It's one of the top rated movies of all time. People loved it. The Russos killed it. It went out on a high note. I am Iron Man. We all cried. I, I, I respectfully, honestly, if I'm being, I disrespectfully disagree. With the person that wrote in for this one. This was not good, yeah. Mr. Garcia. I think Go that 
there are objective things that are true that he points out. And I think that that is a fair analysis in some ways. But I think that emotionally, it's actually a a really good sequel to Infinity War. In that, like, Mm -hmm. for everything he points out that wasn't resolved, I could point out, like, seven other things that were. So, like, and I think that, you know... I also would actually kind of disagree with the Thor thing, because I think the scene he has with Frigga is actually touching. Obviously, they they played as a joke a lot in the beginning of the movie, but I think eventually they do actually resolve it. But I think the bigger thing is just that, like, for Tony and Steve, the two main characters, their catharsis is so real that, like, Mm. it, it satisfied it for me. And and I think that, like, there are some things about movies that you can break down, like, in story and be objective about, but I think in terms of something being a good sequel is all about if it satisfies what the audience is, like, it, it, expectations and subverts them in some ways. And I feel like no one who came out of Ed Game was like... I, I mean, you can point out those things a few years later, right? I can say when I was leaving the theater, I wasn't like, yeah, they really kind of ruined Thor by making too many jokes about it. So I, I respect the the integrity and the way that he breaks it down but like the ecstatic truth of it is that it felt like a good sequel and like when you're talking about big mass entertainment i think that's the thing that matters most uh i will just say this the as far as the point of the the thanos not knowing stark thing if you remember in infinity war stark goes like wait a minute you know me Mm -hmm. and he says like yo i've been cursed with this knowledge and there's a reason and it's not just the stones I mean, the dude saw the Battle of New York and how it played out, and he's like, wait a minute, who the fuck, who the fuck did this? I, I, we were supposed to take over. Loki, what you doing out here? Mm-hmm. You having me looking crazy. And it, and we and I'm sure Thanos did the due diligence. I'm sure he did the backstory. He did the research. He put in the work. He knew who Tony Stark was. I have I have no doubt about that. So even if even if you don't have the 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 version of Thanos in Infinity War and Endgame. You still got the version that's after the Avengers movie mm-hmm. takes place. So and, and that, didn't from my also, standpoint, also didn't that brother go into Nebula's mind when when they captured her so he could get all of that information that she had stored in her memory banks? So I mean, you saying it's 100%. a plot hole? I'm saying pay a damn attention. <laughs> I would, I would, I would tend to, I would tend to agree with that fact. And the and the gem thing. Listen, man, Thanos is Kawhi Leonard. I do my job. I go home. Mm-hmm. Listen, that's it. Job was finished. Mm-hmm. You know how Kobe said job wasn't finished? Thanos mm-hmm. said job was finished. Brother just so wanted to go, go to that planet and make himself some grits. Okay? He just yes. wanted to go season himself up some grits, live in a shack. He didn't want a lot. Okay? You, Nikola Jokic mm-hmm. go back home and play with his horses every offseason, and right we don't there. give that man right no there. grief. We let him do that. So I disagree with this, brother. Yes. So, I, in terms of in terms of hot take, yeah, it's got a little flames to it. I I I admit I got some. You know, the, my my beer got a little singed by it. But you know, at the same time, uh, uh, I would tend to disagree. But thank you, Kevin, for your submission. And finally, we're gonna end with Caleb here. So Caleb makes a point where I feel like it's a point that I've been talking about on this show for for a few years now. So I don't know, Caleb. Did you jack? Did you jack this from me? I don't know if you did or not. But it, uh, due to the love that I have for you, sir, I will give you your, your proper shout. So basically, essentially, phase four, for the most part, people have been criticizing it heavily. People have been wondering, wait, what happened to my MCU? Why isn't it how the way it used to be? I just don't understand mm-hmm. what happened to my wonderful MCU. And what he's saying is, is that the way that we watch things and the way that we've been watching things has kind of changed and who we are has changed as well. And if you compare phase four to phases one through three, it's not like there's that huge of a difference, except that phase three, if you really look at it, just went on a heater and it just didn't stop for like three Mm -hmm. years. So from this standpoint, the take is, is that phase four, there ain't much of a difference from the MCU that we've been getting this entire time, which, you know, I have my thoughts on it, but I'll get to you okay, I, first. I just got to say this right up. This is not a hot take, and what this tells me is that Caleb just doesn't listen to the pod that much. Like, as, as you've been making this exact point forever. The only way that you would say that it's a hot take is if you just don't listen to the pod that much. And Caleb, I love you, and it's fine that you don't, but that's why you say it. And there you go. Rod, how about you, sir? 
I have my thoughts in a second. Uh, honestly, I don't have much to add on that. I I agree with this take. You know, I'm always coming on here telling everybody that the a lot of this MCU stuff is that we started expecting like perfection when we used to just expect entertainment. Is to be used to put out a B or a C movie and we will walk out of that and go, hey, that wasn't too bad. You know, but then once you got to, to phase four, it's like you put out a B or a C movie, everybody wanna come home and kidnap your mama. Like it's just it's just a damn movie. <laughs> Calm the hell down. So I, I agree with I agree with him, but I got us is not that high to take. Is is a pretty no. cold take if we're being honest. I've been talking about this very same point since 2022. Yeah. So I I feel like I will not exacerbate this any further because I've been talking about the same point since 2022. So thank you, Caleb, for your submission, but listen to the goddamn show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also I want to thank everybody for submitting their, their hot takes. Nobody Um, wrote in that secret invasion was secretly good. No, what? Like we didn't get that (laughs) hot take. What are you people doing out there? (laughs) <laughs> oh, oh boy oh boy i would like to get a piece of that one. Oh man secret invasion boy let me tell you secret invasion oh the three of us we became brothers through that show let me uh-huh. tell you we really did the same good, brothers. Like a- good brothers yeah. yes <laughs> oh my god but i want to thank everybody for submitting their hot takes and uh this was a lot of fun um i want to shout out Rod and no shout out to Tej. I don't know where the hell you went, bro. But you were, but you were supposed to be here, and you're not here. Shame on you, please, bro. Shame, shame, please, bros. All of those things. Shame on you. But Rod, we want to thank you for joining us and also providing us with a wonderful character bit. I appreciate, I appreciate you bringing the bringing bring the prop. I don't know, I don't and, know what bit you're talking about. This is just the way Rod always is. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. It just maybe maybe it's the maybe it's the alcohol talking to me a little bit. Mm-hmm. In the, yeah, he's in always this, uh... things about Jason Whitlock. Yes, yes, of course, absolutely. So, Rod, I want to thank you as always for being such a friendly compatriot of this podcast. I want to thank you for your for your. I appreciate you, brothers, having me. Show. Y'all are some good brothers. Anytime you need some hot takes or somebody to judge some hot takes. I'm going to be right here for it because, you know, I'm the high take king. I know how to get in there and give a take that nobody's thinking about, that nobody wants to do it, you know, and I appreciate, you know, y'all brothers dressing up like this tonight. You know, you look great. No mm-hmm. one complimented me on what I had on, but that's fine. You know, it's just when you yeah, excellent. I did say before the recording, all black everything. Yeah, well, so when, you, I, when, I, you're, you know, when you're this excellent, you just, you go with a brand that's like the MCU. People just expect you to show up excellent, and that's what I do every single time. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, and 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 while you're here, Rod, I, I might ask where can we find your work and where can we find what you do because you have a wonderful podcast yourself. The Black Guy Who Tips is the podcast. You can go to our website and you can find it or anywhere you find podcast. Just put the Black Guy Who Tips in, and we up in there. And just make sure you follow the show and and all that stuff. We appreciate y'all, brothers. Wonderful stuff. And Jay Christie, where can we follow you, my friend? You can follow me on Twitter at the Jay Christie and follow me on TikTok at the Jay Christie as well. Um, I mean, you know, Rod shattered out earlier doing TikToks. Uh, maybe you'll see these guys on one sometime soon, maybe next week. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Uh, yeah, having a lot of fun. Wonderful stuff. You can follow me on Twitter at Anthony Canton underscore three. Follow the show at MC University Pod on all platforms. Follow the YouTube ch- YouTube channel. Uh, the Patreon, as I mentioned, um, I will be gone for a couple of weeks from the show. I'm, I'm, uh, as, uh, as Martin Lawrence's Marcus Burnett likes to say in bad boys, I'm going for some quality time for the next couple of weeks. So we're some quality time, man. So I'll, I'll be out of it in the meantime, Jake, uh, J- however Jake decides to handle the show, that's what you will get. And, uh, just stay tuned for that. So I appreciate everybody for listening and supporting in the meantime, we get close to Agatha. Agatha's creeping around the corner. So we're going to have a lot of fun talking about that show and all the witchiness and Aubrey Plaza. Yes, she's having more than a moment. Looking forward to that. So for Rod and Jake, I am Anthony Canton the third. This has been Marvel Cinematic University, and we will talk to you next time.